This is the Moto X. It's Motorola's first significant phone since being acquired by Google. And really their goal with this phone is to attract a mainstream audience who wants more than just the cheapest available Android phone. At first glance, the Moto X may not have the most eye-catching design, but its attention to little details are things that can be appreciated. For example, the display is the same size as the HTC One, yet they managed to fit that 4.7-inch screen into a body that's much smaller than HTC's flagship phone. On paper, the Moto X may not have all the processing power that the Samsung Galaxy S4 or HTC One has, but you'd never notice it in day-to-day -day use. The camera, on the other hand, is noticeably worse than other phones, especially in low light. Another unique feature of the Moto X, which is actually useful, is the phone's notification screen, which uses the phone's sensors to kick on automatically when you pull it out of your pocket or pick it up. But another smart thing that it does is that it doesn't light up the whole screen, so it's not wasting battery every time you check to see if you have a new email or a text message or call. OK, Google now. One of the Moto X's biggest selling points is a voice command system that's always listening. So whenever you say, OK, Google now, it'll kick in from any state that it's in and allow you to launch an app or send a text message or get directions. And while it's functional, the usefulness in your day-to-day -day life is somewhat limited. And if you use a password to lock your screen, it's all but useless. And while the other phones may have better cameras or be better for gaming, they don't have the same all-day battery life that the Moto X has, and it really does last all day nor do they provide the same overall ease of use that the Moto X does. The Moto X is a phone that may not be the best at any one thing, but it's so good at every little thing that you can't help but love it.